Hey, everybody, we're back with another awesome AI interview as part of our Innovators in AI series. That's what we're calling it here. We've never seen technology move as fast as artificial intelligence is currently moving. This is not hyperbolic. This is reality. Every week, every 48 hours, somebody builds on the work of uh, an open source project or another company or by doing prompts or by connecting things together. So we're going to dedicate a large percentage of the show to AI this year or until this thing slows down. So today I'm joined by the co-founder of a company called Runway. Runway did some of the earliest research that eventually led to the creation of Stable Diffusion. That's the project that takes text and turns it into an image, right? You type in, I'd like to make a painting in a Renaissance style of Donald Trump in a courtroom, and then all of a sudden you start getting really amazing output. So the language that we're going to use to program going forward is going to be called English. Uh, so the CEO of Runway is going to walk us through, and, and that's really what I'm trying to focus here on the show in 2023, actually using the tools and seeing them in action. So you don't just get to hear the opinion of some podcaster who's not using the tools. I'm using the tools, my producers are using the tools, and the people on the podcast are building the tools. You're going to actually see them at work. This is why you come here to This Week in Startups is to get inside information. And what Runway is doing is merging generative AI with visual effects, VFX. So the visual effects team that one best picture for everything, everywhere, all at once, a really dope film. Uh, they used Runway to help build the images uh, that you saw in that best picture winner. Also, Late Show with Stephen Colbert. They're also using this tool, Runway. And many other brands are doing that. So it's an amazing interview. The founder is really brilliant. Shares a ton of practical examples and demos. You're going to love this one. Stick with us. This Week in Startups is brought to you by Clumio. When you're building a company, don't let backups and compliance requirements distract you. Let the data protection experts at Clumio help with immutable air gap backups that put compliance on autopilot. Visit them at clumio.com slash twist to start a free backup or sign up for a demo. Squarespace, turn your idea into a new website. Go to squarespace.com slash twist for a free trial. When you're ready to launch, Use offer code TWIST to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. And the Microsoft for Startups Founders Hub helps all founders build a better startup at a lower cost from day one. Startups get up to $150,000 in Azure credits, access to free OpenAI credits, free dev tools like GitHub, technical advisory, access to mentors and experts, and so much more. There is no funding requirement and it only takes minutes to join. Sign up today at aka.ms slash this week in startups. All right, everybody. This AI stuff is moving faster and faster. So here at This Week in Startups, we're going to have somebody on once or twice a week who's building something interesting in AI. So consider us <laughs> This Week in Startups, This Week in uh, AI for the next couple of months or until this crazy, crazy pace slows down. Uh, today, I'm joined by Chris Valenzuela. He is the CEO and co-founder of a company called Runway. It's an AI browser-based creative suite. You can check it out at runwayml.com. It's just 30 different tools on the website, photo editing, video editing, auto editing, generative AI, Instant visual effects like uh, removing the background on a photo, text to color grading, audio silence removers, all that kind of stuff. He started Runway back in 2018 before Generative AI even had a name. Chris, welcome to the program. Thank you for having me here. All right. Right after graduating NYU in New York City, my hometown, you uh, started building this. Uh, and then things have gotten pretty busy it's a SaaS based company it's a free tier but after that you pay 12 to 28 bucks a user per month uh not dissimilar than i think the pricing of canva or the adobe creative suite and you've got all kinds of people using this including uh the late show with stephen colbert likes to use it i guess to make interesting video graphics explain to us what you've built and how it's going yeah, happy to. So Runway is, uh, as you were saying, a, a company that's built a lot of products and, and offerings for the creative uh, economy. 
But uh, at the core, we're actually a research-driven company. We, we got started around 2018. And since then, we've been publishing and really pushing the, the space on the generative AI um, landscape for both image and video. And so very proud of being pioneers in, in research in that space uh, with things like stable diffusion and latent diffusion and Gen 1 and Gen 2, which are, I would consider, very important like models um, that have driven a lot of the, the excitement that we see nowadays. Um, and so we do that research, we do the fundamental research in, for those models to be built, those foundational uh, models, and then we build products on top of those those models ourselves. Um, so it's been a, quite a journey since we started. Yeah, how many almost. how many people are using this product now? Because you've raised a ton of money. I noticed uh, you recently raised, mm -hmm. wow, 50 million at a $500 million valuation. Mm -hmm. So so how many people are using this tool? Uh, how many people are paying for it? We have millions of customers all over the world that range from professional post-production films and uh, award-winning like directors uh, to art ad agencies and post-production teams and small creators as well. It's everyone really who wants to tell a story with video um, can be and should be using Runway. So it's millions of users. Most of those would be free, I would assume, because that's a large number. And you've got tens of thousands of people paying for this, something in that range? Uh, we have a large amount of paying customers. We have uh, enterprise deals and uh, subscription-based offerings. You can also pay for usage of the platform. So you buy the credits to like render video as well. Ah, um, so yeah. Uh, so maybe you could show us, and uh, I'll sportscast it a little bit. So maybe you could show me. I know you have some new features coming out, but maybe show us uh, what it does here. Sure. Uh, and then... Uh, Sportscast it a bit because most people listen to podcasts, as you know, and describe what they're seeing on the screen. I will. So here's uh, here's a research uh, work that we've been working on for the last couple of months. Um, it's a state of the art video generation model. Uh, Gen one and Gen two represent our family of of video generation models. This is this is a way of rendering and creating video in completely new ways, in ways that haven't really been possible before. So let me walk you through what Gen 2 really, really does. The most, uh, there are eight different modes of using Gen 2 and Gen 1. One of the most perhaps uh, interesting ones and different ones is that you can generate video using a text prompt. And so you might come across, or I have seen like text generator, or sorry, image generator uh, models and um, kind of like models that are able to create images out of, uh, out of uh, pure text. This is very similar, but instead of generating one single image, you generate a continuous video frame, right? This can be of anything. You can basically type anything you want, and you'll get, you'll get a, a consistent video in that style. So I'm just showing here uh, an, an aerial footage uh, of a mountain range, and we basically see uh, that, that shot, um, a, a mountain with some kind of like lights. There's the sun on the, on the back. You can see the consistency of the frames kind of applied here. Um, and so then you that can was generated just with that one sentence, or did it take that more was, prompts? No, just that one sentence. You just input Got a it. sentence, and you get a video. Um, and so Pretty you can impressive. use all sort of. How long would the video be? Uh, is it like limited to a five second or ten second video? No, right now we have fifteen second video clips uh, support. Um, so we're working towards uh, allowing our customers to do more than that, uh, but. But, but yeah, 15 seconds is, will be available very soon in, in the product. Um, and so you can, you can use all sort of different input mechanisms. So the one I was telling you here is like text, text to video is another one. So I'm just uh, using the prompt of, um, of um, late afternoon sun peeking through the window of uh, New York City loft. You basically get a, that representation on the right. But then here's interesting. Here's an interesting combination of things. You can, you can drive the video generation process with a combination of a text prompt and an image. So in this mm. case, what you're seeing here is we call this character mode. You can input a video of your, an image of yourself or anything at all, and then describe how you want to animate or uh, create a video out of that single image using a, mm. a language a description. And basically you generate that video based on that. Um, there's also a variation right, so of So in like, this one, it said, just so we read the text here, you uploaded yes. an image of a uh, dapper looking gentleman with a very nice mustache and a, and a wispy hair and it says that was Hello. also generated by the way oh so that was a generated image and then yes. you said of uh, you upload that generated image and say a low angle shot of a man walking down a street illuminated by the neon signs of the bars around him and we get what looks like 
uh, you know, a very um, uh, diffuse background of lights hanging in the air, uh, almost like he's in Hong Kong or something on an alleyway. <laughs> And he's walking around. Mm, it's a little bit weird, a little jerky, but it, it's pretty impressive for, I guess, is this a 1.0 of text to video generation? Yeah, this is the first iteration that we made public. Uh, next it. iterations are going to come over the next couple of months. So this wouldn't replace a movie that or a TV show, but it would certainly be an amazing storyboard or a piece of collateral to start with. I think right now it definitely can be the f the the a collateral or a B-roll or some sort of a, a um, storyboarding tool. But yeah. photorealism and consistency and quality of outputs, it's only a matter of time. And we're working towards getting that really out of the door as soon as possible. Again, it's think about this as like early versions of GPT-1 or 2, right? You're seeing... You're seeing earlier iterations and early models that are able to render this and do this. Mm. These, these models didn't exist just a couple of months ago. Are you trying to build the next Uber or Robinhood? I hope so. Well, here are three important tips for you. First, make sure your data is protected. Obviously, remember, just because your data is in the cloud doesn't mean it's automatically backed up. Your data is your responsibility. You got to make sure it's backed up. Second, don't let backups and compliance requirements distract you. Let your engineers focus on product innovation, not writing scripts for compliance audits. And when it comes to backups, the major players have major limitations like snapshots. If your account is compromised, your backups are compromised. But Plumio stores your backups on a different server. So if your main account is compromised, your backups are always safe the way it should be. And third, take control of your cloud costs. You'd be surprised how much of your storage costs come from backups, snapshots, versioning, and replication. Or maybe you maybe you wouldn't be surprised because you've seen these <laughs> jaw-dropping bills. Well, Clumio can help you with all three of these important points. They provide turnkey data protection that is air-gapped, immutable, and cost-optimized. Clumio has saved customers over 30% on backup costs while putting security and compliance on autopilot. Visit them at clumio.com slash twist to start a free backup or sign up for a demo. That's clumio.com slash twist. How long have you been working on this text to, to video just to give people an idea? Uh, and then how many people have been working on this? Is this based on an open source project that you're building on top of? No, this is entirely our own research. We've, okay. we've been pioneering research in the space from a long time. So we are the authors and the creators of uh, a model called uh, latent diffusion that was then turned into stable diffusion with creators of a few audio based models as well. And so really we've been Isn't pioneering stable diffusion, a open source project. Yeah, an open source project we uh, re open source and release with the University of LMB Munich in Germany. Oh, so you were part of that original project? Yes. So here are the, the authors is uh, oh. LMB Munich, uh, Heidelberg University and Runway. Those are the three main organizations behind. When, uh, when, when did Stable Diffusion and you said there was a name for Stable Diffusion before it was called that? So late, this is the paper. So this is you can consider this the, the, the origins of ah. that that innovation, right? High resolution image synthesis with latent diffusion models. And so latent diffusion was actually the, the short to describe this approach, which is the technique, the research behind this. Got it. Um, what is that, latent got, diffusion models? Explain to us technically, for non-technical people, what, what this actually means. And, wh and when did this research paper, this was written in when, 2020 or something? Uh, 2022. Oh, okay. This <laughs> is last yes. year. Yes. It's, uh, I mean, so the published- how the fast this is moving. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, the paper was released and published on April uh, 13 of 2022. Um, subsequent iterations of a model have been released since then. The model has been open source and, as you know, has taken a life of its own. Uh, latent diffusion introduces a an, an different technique to generating images using a diffusion based technique in the latent space. That's basically like in, in short what, what we've kind of like improved and, and introduced here. And it's a very generalizable approach that can be used for different techniques, not just image uh, synthesis, but in painting and um, semant using semantic maps for driving those image generation processes. Um, it was pretty much like a, a very, very um, unique approach towards tackling the speed and the consistency of image generators out there. And I'm sure you've seen the, the kind of like wave of creativity that uh, this model and then stable diffusion has, has created. Um, so yeah, I'm very proud to be, to be part of that, that, that transformation. 
So were you, did you help write that paper or you started building the open source project on top of what was learned in that paper? No. So the paper, again, is the collaboration between two research organizations, Runway and the University of uh, LMU Munich. Uh, our research scientists, uh, together with the research scientists at LMU, kind of like pioneered that approach. Uh, that was driven uh, by Runway, which was, I guess, mm. the company we, we, we formed, founded four years ago, exactly to drive these kind of like research outcomes out. Got it. And so in 2018, we, we, I came out to NYU, did research there, started the company right out of uh, research school, and then started building the company, raised money, started building the research efforts here. One of the many publications we've done was, was this, um, that it's, I guess, one of the most well-knowns. So you have this latent diffusion, then you have stability ai that's another company that kind of leveraged this open source project to build uh generative video and ai products so once this diffusion model was released multiple i guess the, the model took a life of its own and we've seen all sort of different companies building open source solutions on top of it which is great i think that drives a lot of the field forward in very positive ways uh but as the kind of like original authors of the paper and the work and the research and the engineering here uh, we always kind of like focus on improving and continue to push the boundary of like research and that kind of like manifests itself in our family of Gen X models now. So this is for us the next frontier in video generation that takes us a lot of the insights from from our image generation process from before. And this stuff is starting to make its way. Uh, I had mentioned Stephen Colbert before, but uh, maybe we could pull up the image you used runway to make a music video, sorry commemorating the anniversary of the um, American dream ice cream uh, by <laughs> yeah. Stephen Colbert. Uh, and I actually have the URL of it here. I don't know if you have that. Uh, but, oh, you probably have it in your customer stories. Yes. So how does one get a customer like Stephen Colbert? H how did that happen? And then what what is the reception you got from Hollywood? Uh, because <laughs> It does seem like these, this is a very clever beachhead market. People who are doing late night TV shows, they love doing skits, but they don't have a huge budget. They're building this stuff in real time. So it's not like they're going to, you know, be able to afford to go to industrial light and magic and make something. So did you do this for them or they did it themselves? Or did you send no. some people over to their offices to teach them how to do it? They did and it themselves. If you could see it, that'd be great. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, they did it themselves, which is funny. That the story about how the team behind the little show started to use Runway was basically we don't we don't have marketing ourselves. So everyone who comes to Runway comes mostly via word of mouth. Um, someone inside the team here started to use one of our tools. We have around thirty five different tools. So the tools I mean, telling you and showing you Gen One and Gen Two are one of the many tools that we have. We have one tool for uh, rotoscoping, which is a traditional like frame by frame task that editors do. And it takes them like a lot of time, like hours, if not days of work. In Runway, you can do it in like, I'm not kidding, like a second, like literally one second. One of the editors started to use it for the show um, and eventually like pick up the entire team inside inside the, the Colbert show. And now they've been using it for a bunch of different like edits. Um, and if they, they've taken, and this is, this is during the interview that I'm showing here, um, six hours of work combined into six minutes. And that is the power wow. of like this kind of like technology when you can automate and go ahead. And what we're seeing here is a dancing, <laughs> a pint of ice cream with a singer in front of it who looks like, um, is that a real singer? This is Katy Perry. Yeah. Oh, it is in fact, Katy Perry. And then some people in shark outfits. So what's real here and what's fake? So the ice cream, uh, it's, it's fake. That's been, that's been added in post. That's the visual effects component. Are of the it. sharks real? The sharks are real. Yes. But the, the, See, this is the what's mind blowing about this. I'm looking at it with you and I'm like, that looks like Katy Perry, but because I knew this was computer generated, I'm like, is that a computer generated Katy Perry? I can't no, tell. No, no, no. <laughs> no, this I is Katy Perry. This is an actual shot. The were real and the ice cream was real and then everything behind them was fake, but the sharks are not real. The dancing pint of Ben and Jerry's isn't real. And then obviously the pineapple trees behind it. That's crazy. So, That's uh, so just to be clear, just to be clear, everything here is like real. The only thing that the magic here is you combine all of those real elements into one singular shot that you believe is happening ah. in real, right? But the Ben and Jerry's shot is shot somewhere else. Katy Perry's shot Got somewhere it. else. Oh, okay. And so then those you are mix elements. Them. And then yes. you said mix them together. 
Right, but mixing them together takes you a lot of work because you have mm. to go frame by frame matching. And this is the work that editors, this is the work that BFX uh. studios are spending hours of work doing, right? This is why green screen success. You show it in a green screen and then you take the actor out of the green screen, right? Amazing. If you don't have a green screen, then you're bounded to like hours of work to recreate that effect. And that's mm. where like our tools come in and just help you do that, right? Got it. This is this, is, this was from the Super Bowl. It was yes. a Super Bowl performance where she did something like this years ago. So this is exactly. all stitching that together. Exactly. And so this this is amazing that like you are getting to the point where the elements are just hard to determine what's real and what's not. And you said this takes them a couple of hours to do this when they have those elements already. Yes. So they went from six hours to six minutes of work, which which for wow. any filmmaker or editor really really makes a lot of of, of diff difference. If you can tell from the podcast lately, we've been doubling and tripling down on Founder University and Launch. In fact, it's basically the future of our venture capital firm. And that's awesome because I'm working with a couple of hundred early stage founders really early and getting to see what tools they use. You know what tool they show up with most? They show up with Squarespace. They put up their first website instantly, quickly with Squarespace. And it's beautiful and it makes them look like a million bucks. The thing you may not be aware of is that Squarespace, beyond the beautiful templates that make your company look like a million bucks and that work on mobile, it's not just a pretty website. It is a powerful e-commerce platform now and they have member areas. What's a member area? You know, people like to sell content now and premium content, it's a big business. Well, they have that built in to Squarespace and they don't take you know, double digit percentages of your revenue like those other platforms do. And they also have appointment scheduling. So, you know, if you're doing a business where you're a consultant, you want to charge for your time, well, you have scheduling built into it as well. And this is the, the brilliance of Squarespace. It's going to look beautiful, as you know. So here's what I want you to do. Just head to squarespace.com slash twist for a free trial. When you're ready to launch, use the offer code twist. You save an extra 10% off your first purchase of a website or a domain. We love you, Squarespace. Y you know how it is. When you're a technologist, everybody in your family, your friends, your circle, your network come to you and say, hey, I got to get a website up. Can you find me a developer, a designer, a product manager? And you just say, you know what? Yes, I can find you all that and more at squarespace.com slash twist. You mentioned film and hollywood um and which which brings me to like actually uh, our like film festival that we hosted in new york and in san francisco just a couple of weeks ago this was a celebration of films uh, that are already being using or have incorporated ai techniques into the process and we're not talking about like prototypes we're talking about like real filmmakers who've been working on film for for years we had darren aronofsky come in to the panel to chat about darren aronofsky came yeah yeah Wow. He, he, I hosted he in 19, in the 90s, I hosted a screening when he was broke for a film called <laughs> Pi, which I oh, think he Pi shot on, he yeah. shot it on eight, um, eight millimeter, I think. And he was broke and I met him at a party and I said, wow, I, I really uh, want to see your movie. And he said, uh, oh yeah, I love your magazine, J.K.L. And I said, uh, I'd love to host a screen. He said, would you host a screening for it with like Silicon Alley tech people? I was like, sure. How do you do that? He's like, you rent a theater, you pay for it, and you invite people. And I was like, all right, <laughs> I'll do that for you. And I spent like 1500 bucks renting a theater and having drinks after. And he was so kind, Darren Aronofsky. He came and he hung out with us and the star of the film. And yep. uh, we just had drinks. And we did that over on uh, Avenue B and like 12th, whatever that movie theater over there was. It was quite fun. So he came. So he's obviously into this. These are short films that were made. Uh, These are short films. We we yeah. premiered 10 short films that were made in a combination of either entirely generated AI techniques or analog with generated. Uh, these are films made by either professional filmmakers, new filmmakers, and really like just showing the quality really like it, it's just mind blowing here. The films are already uh, accessible in our website. So if you go to uh, runwell.com you might you might get a sense and, and a chance to see them all which is which is definitely what i would encourage which you one all was, to, to which see. one won did one win the yeah AI we had a palm door yes the grand prix that's how we call it there was a grand prix a gold a silver honorary and then merits uh mm. the grand prix was an uh, incredible film by ricardo fusetti who's been working on visual effects for some time now called generation the first time I saw the film, it just like it got goes. It's on. It's, just, it's on the website. Can we just yes, hit the play button? Let's yeah, hit the play let's, button. Let's watch it. Okay, so we're watching this. I'll sportscast it. Okay, it's got a little warning here that could be flashing images. We're watching this. Okay, you don't have I'm the audio. Seeing, that's the. Uh, that's yeah. That, I don't need to have the audio. It's good for us to sort of describe what's happening here. But it was a close up of a human. Now there's a human dancing. 
on the floor in uh you know essentially some sports uh bra and uh shorts and then their body is turning all kinds of different crazy colors i'm assuming this is a human that's actually been shot on video or is that a computer generated no, human that that's a that's a real human then now you're real seeing human. Yes, and Got now it. you're seeing there's a there's a voiceover that's uh, kind of like telling a story about evolution behind the scenes, so you mm. can really hear that right now. But there's a music that's accompanying this, and now you're seeing this human being turned into some sort of animation, and like graphics are emerging with the body of the dancer. Wild. Those are all generated, and so the 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 ins the the the, the, the yeah. aspects and the effects here were all driven by um, by AI generation kind of like techniques. Got it. So they found a modern dancer, interpretive dancer, there, or just a person who's uh, really high dancing like a maniac and then put all these incredible <laughs> effects on it, which are truly stunning and it's hard to look away. And if this was made in the 80s or 90s, or let's say the 90s for MTV, uh, this would have cost a million dollars in graphic effects. It's like this outdoes, you know, any Peter Gabriel computer effect, you know, sledgehammer or whatever that was claymation, but you know, all these different things that were done in the 80s and 90s for music videos, this would be the number one video of the year. Yeah, definitely, definitely. And this is only the beginning. I think this is this is technologies and tools that are only accessible for the last couple of years, to be honest. But but to get to your point on Hollywood, these are tools mm -hmm. that the industry has already been embracing. And we're actually working really closely with filmmakers themselves to incorporate more of this AI revolution into their processes. We, we have a division of Runway called Runway Studios that partnered with filmmakers and with film studios and with filmmakers to really help them understand the power of generative AI for film and for video generation. And so we work with with a few films already, with the Berlin Film Festival, with a few films in Barcelona and a few other like places. This wasn't really possible two years ago. Oh, this is really impossible. Like, yeah, actually the, the tagline of our companies make the impossible. We're making things that were impossible just a couple of years ago. Uh, so yeah, I'm yeah saying, was, like two years ago, literally this wasn't on the table, maybe even 18 months ago, this yeah. all started in the last 18 months. We've been working on this for the last four years, I think, but, but more importantly, I would say the last six, eight months has, we've seen an explosion on the quality consistency and overall Got understanding it. of the technology. And I think that that really helps a lot. Um, so definitely it's, it's been a lot of work behind the scenes. But uh, something like Gen 2, which is a text to video model was, yeah, literally not possible a couple of months ago. All right. So some questions here, I think are very important. What does it cost to make a music video like that in terms of what you have to pay your company? So what did Runway make in fees, <laughs> in software fees to make that dance video we just saw, which was super trippy and would have won video of the year at the MTV Music Video Awards in 94? Um, so there's there's the cost of training a model. And so we have a large research cluster that uh, we use to basically train these models from scratch. First of all, invent them and then train them. Um, then there's not the inference you, not cost. Not your cost, the, the cost to me as the director. Oh, the cost really depends. Like, it depends on like the, the team that you have and the, the, the scale of the ambition on the idea that you want to like execute. But let me give you an example of like... I'm just saying the software cost. If I had five people working on this and we used your software oh, for a week... It's 15 bucks. So it's just 15 bucks a month that you get. <laughs> so th this is what I'm sort of getting at. There's all the amount of money you spent. I'm assuming you spent millions of dollars building this model with dozens yes. of people. Uh, at yes, least. we're 40, 40, 40 people in the, in the team. So 40 people and millions of dollars invested over four years or tens of millions, let's say low tens of millions um, to now make a tool that can make music videos that in 1994 would have won video of the year and the person who made it probably gave your company 20 bucks a month, or if they had 10 people on it, 200 bucks a month. That's the power of disruptive technologies to just make anything, everything more convenient it's and easy to use. All right. Yeah. So at the pace this is going, you happen to know a lot more than uh, myself and the people in the audience because you're actually building this. At the pace this is going, certainly you're aware of what John Favreau has been doing with the Mandalorian with those yes. 360 degree screens that they use as the background. You yes. know this technology, I'm, I don't know the name yes. of it. Um, virtual, but, virtual production. Okay, virtual production. So describe what virtual production is and what has led to, you know, uh, Disney with Star Wars being to, able to make without sets, incredibly compelling products like the Mandalorian in a very short period of time at a much smaller budget, and then compare where you're at 
And when would these two things be yeah. indecipherable for <laughs> myself and my daughters? How many seasons out? We're on season three or four of The Mandalorian now. How many more seasons? How many more years until these two things are basically um, indecipherable? Um, I'd like the exact number of years, please. But you don't have to go to months. <laughs> with days or seconds as well? I can't try no, to predict. No, just, um, just years. No, I think... I think like it's always good to look at like the pace of 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 research in a scale. So if you if you see Gen One and Gen Two, video generation was really hard to imagine in the quality of results that we see today just eight months ago, right? So eight months ago we went from like, hey, you can do this, to hey, now you can render photorealistic video and you can type anything. You can just give me a prompt and I'll generate it for you. I think we're still a lot of ways to improve these models and we'll see that over the next couple of months. I think the next 12 to 18 months, we'll see a big step up in quality of and controllability of these models over time. Mm -hmm. um, and so we're not far away from from from, from getting a, an entire Mandalorian made with Journey AI, for sure. Five years? Three years? Oh, definitely less. Uh, I would less say than one five? Or two. Less than three? Yeah, yeah for sure. No, really indecipherable. So, so, so here's the thing: you, you're not you're going to be able to generate. Uh, you're going to be in the main Mandalorian character, right? Mm -hmm. The fact that you can render and generate films on demand will allow you to generate any film that you ever wanted to generate. So that's an interesting also position to be in, where the type of films that you're consuming right now are going to be very different from the films that you're going to start watching in a couple of years because mm -hmm. they're going to be made very differently. You are going to be the main actor in every film video scene that you ever imagined and also you can generate every film technically you will mm. be able to generate entire films and so it's a very different i guess uh, i guess position to be in because you know there's this incredible thing that occurred i don't know if you're aware of it uh, you seem to be you're a fan of the film you're a fan of cinema of course huge fan of film huge fan of cinema you got a favorite yeah. uh favorite director or two What's your favorite uh, huge fan of darren arfanowski i think that's uh, <laughs> yeah really first you got a favorite, yeah. uh, was Requiem for you? What's your favorite? Uh, I think Requiem was was definitely a highlight. Uh, uh, the Fountain was also like See, uh, I knew you were going to go for Fountain. Me. Fountain is just... <laughs> it's so good. Um, and then you know more recently... I mean, to star in the Fountain? Yeah, Brad I think Pitt. it was... Uh, yes, and then he, he decided to go somewhere else. Um, that movie is just, just beautiful. And, and then uh, The Well, more recently. I don't know if you've seen The Well, but... Oh, the well was incredible. It's so good. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. mean, if you, what's your what's your favorite? Well, you know, Requiem for a Dream is one of the most powerful films ever made. Yes. Um, the Fighter. Oh, the I'm sorry, fighters. the Wrestler, rather the, the wrestler, wrestler. Yeah, yeah. Is just extraordinary. So you know, he, it really can go two ways with Darren. Uh, there is the surreal, and then there's the character performance, right? And and. These, if you look at something like The Whale and The Wrestler, these are incredible performances uh, in each one of those films. And then if we look like something, you know, Pi, Requiem, and um, The Fountain, these are very high concepts. They also have great performances, don't get me wrong. But conceptually, Requiem for a Dream, how the storytelling occurred, The Fountain, how the storytelling occurs, or Pi, they're very big think kind of films, yep. right? And they rely not primarily just on the performance of one exceptional person where you connect with them, which is really what happened in the well with Brendan Fraser and um, the wrestler with um, uh, Mickey Rourke. But yeah, he's just an extraordinary filmmaker. Who's your, who's number two on your list? You got a number else two. Uh, it's hard. It's hard to get favorites to be honest. Um, I've tried to well, watch work as backwards much from as a film. What are, what are films that <laughs> if you had to watch a film for the 10th time, you'd have no problem watching it. Be excited uh, to watch watched, it at the like, time. Yeah, I mean a lot. Um, I watched Melancholia too many times. Uh, oh, really? Lars von Trier. Yeah, it's a beautiful wow. film as well. Um, I have too many. I think. I mean, Melancholia. Course, what a pull! That's yeah, a that's a good. It? Of course, yes. Uh, that's yeah, a. Yeah, yeah. That is a another one of these like intellectually mesmerizing, interesting yeah. uh, films. If you haven't seen it, it's. Yeah. And then The Square. I don't know if you watched The Square. Uh, no. Was, and, and Force Majeure. Um, Force Majeure. Beautiful Majora, movies yeah. as well. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fa fascinating. 
but you know, at least I got a movie review out of this. I, sure, I'm, a, yeah. I'm a big Ridley Scott fan, Gladiator, Blade Runner, et cetera. I like, I like, I'm a big Ridley Scott. Uh, and What's Kurosawa. your favorite Ridley Scott? Oh, yeah, Kira Kurosawa, I guess. Huge. You know, for Kurosawa, I go both ways. I love the film noir and I love the samurai genre. Um, mm -hmm. I love High and Low and Stray Dog. If you haven't seen the, um, if you haven't seen so those guess. two uh, on the film the Wah side, and then obviously Seven Samurai and Throne of Blood. I mean, it just it's all am amazing. Yes, <laughs> it's just hard for people to watch those films because they're a little bit too slow and methodical, and people yeah. want to look at their <laughs> phones, and they can't just sit. It's like it's like somebody who goes to a museum and you want to take in a picture, or the Venus de Milo. It requires you to quiet your mind. And absorb it for, you know, five, yeah. but five minutes of your life, which for in today's modern era to let your mind absorb something for five minutes straight, let alone for a, 120 minutes and give yourself over your attention over to something. This is very hard for humans. Is a, a really something has been lost. Um, I, agree. I agree. Yeah. I, I do think still that um, a lot of the best films are yet to be made. I think we're. We have mm. one of the things that is going to be really interesting about Nerd AI is that you're going to start seeing stories from filmmakers that never had access to the tools that only a handful of filmmakers used to have, right? So that from a from a democratization and storytelling perspective, it's interesting to see from that from that side, which is you, we've loved cinema with all of these directors and filmmakers who really pioneer really interesting like narratives and films. Yet I don't think we've we've come like even close to the level of creativity we'll start to see once you can put bfx studio kind of like tools in the hands of everyone and mm. that that is like a really interesting um, um thing to to have in mind as we continue to think about just journey right in general I, I think this is the key observation and this is something i watched happen at sundance in the late 90s and the early 2000s when i would go there you know and i, and I grew up in new york and i was in new york during the 90s a digital camera the vx100 a thousand came out the sony you could record on digital cameras but blow it up to be on actual um film you'd blow up your digital right. to film this is before they had digital projectors in movie theaters so there was this path uh, where a guy named bennett miller created a film called the crew shot on this vx 1000 or whatever it was and uh darren aronofsky shot eight and then blew it up and then you know, many other people, uh, Wayne Wang did Center of the World and a bunch of films were made on digital cameras. And it really did change who could make a film. And then at Sundance, yes. you started to see all these digital films come out uh, because you could shoot an unlimited number of takes and you could do it in a more of a guerrilla fashion and you didn't have to develop film. Just at the at the end, when the film was finished, you would then yes. send it to get printed up to film. And now that's not, that's not even necessary. So here you're going to have people who don't know how to use a camera and don't have the ability to access a thousand dollar or two thousand dollar camera be able to make something and that is yes. just next yes. level fascinating yes yes and that that for me is like the most interesting thing that we'll start to see coming out of this these models story you know and that, and that was really the basis of sundance was trying to find new voices to tell stories um people who hadn't had access uh, and, you know, documentary, whether it was documentaries or Napoleon Dynamite or Riding Giants yes. or Super Size Me, these films were just a different generation of filmmakers. If, if, you, if it hadn't yeah. been for the digital camera, it could never have happened. No. Yeah, it it's never just been a different. Able to afford it. It's a different set of affordances and creative possibilities. And so you have filmmakers who are really, I think a lot of filmmakers are just technical innovators. They're the ones driving the innovation forward. I mean, think about Darren. He's, He's pioneering a lot of things in the space. And I think that combination of like art and science is what we start to see more specifically in generative AI as more people start to get into the field and understanding the power of these tools. This is a new camera. That's that's a, the best analogy to think about this. Mm. These models are allow would allow you to capture a reality in a, in a set of expressive tools in the same way that the camera did for us 150 years ago. The level of output from a creative standpoint is it's like unprecedented and yet to be seen because we haven't had this technology before. Um, mm. But really thinking about it as a tool to like do those kind of storytelling. I always go back. There's um, I don't know if you watch this beautiful documentary on Disney Plus for um, about the story of ILM. 
Um, I think oh, that, I that, seen that yeah. super incredible. I definitely recommend that. And it's kind of like taking the, the, the position and the, the perspective on really understanding how the field of visual effects was born. It wasn't a thing until like a bunch of hackers and tinkers and artists just came together to make a film about Star Wars, right? And they're flying like starships in the, in the, in the, mm. in the space, right? Imagining that was, and first of all, was impossible until someone had to create it. So, and then from there on, like a whole, set of like domains and films were, were possible um i think we're early stages of something very similar here yeah i mean it's it's so funny i have a list of the films from 99 to like 2000 and, and that era and it, it's wild to see like harmony uh corinne doing julian donkey boy that was a digital film and right next to it star wars episode one the phantom menace the, one of the first yeah. like major blockbuster films blair witch project was another one uh lars von trier the idiots um in 98 and uh the center of the world by wayne wang in 2001 uh tape by richard linkletter and you, you're starting to see like some of these very steven soderbergh did uh full frontal i mean really like famous david lynch did rabbits these were films that w could not have get could not have gotten funding and so that's and 28 days later was also that danny boyle's film wow um <laughs> a lot of these films would not have been given the budget you know, if they had to use actual film stock, and I think this is going to be the very interesting thing that you're going to do. All right, everybody, our friends from Microsoft are here. Tom Davis, a senior director at Microsoft for Startups, and you're a former founder. You are here today to talk to us about the giant leaps that Microsoft has made in the AI space. You've been giving Azure credits to startups, and uh, that's delightful and amazing. But people really want access to the OpenAI API. Yeah, absolutely. So there's two things. First of all, we've got a benefit that we offer our startups. They can get two and a half thousand dollars worth of OpenAI credits, so they can get access to the latest and greatest models that OpenAI are delivering. But then they get access through the up to one hundred fifty thousand dollars worth of credits that we offer through Founders Hub to leverage the Azure OpenAI service, which has a full SLA around it. So when they want to go into production and really have that reliability that we provide with with the Azure. SLA, they can leverage the Azure OpenAI service APIs. And they can do things like the, with the GPT models, with Codex for the coding, and also for the DALI models as well for images. So it's a full service. It's not just the great APIs that you get and access to the LLMs. They can build out their own LLMs using open source, and then they can manage those with our AI tooling services as well. Amazing. Well done. And if anybody wants to sign up for that, do it now while you are in front of your computer, aka.ms slash This Week in Startups, aka.ms slash This Week in Startups. Well done, Microsoft, and well done, Tom. Tell me about, you know, who who is most interested in this today? Is it independent voices and people tinkering? Or is Hollywood really sweating what you're doing? And, and who in Hollywood is starting to tinker? Who's tinkering? Um, Hollywood is particularly excited about what we're doing to be honest i think we are working really closely with both filmmakers themselves but also production houses and studios mm. who i mean from a cost perspective if you really think about these are tools that will drive costs down so the, mm. the the big promise here is that you're going to take the cost of content down to zero so making professional films will the cost of making a film will continuously go down to zero from a Producer perspective, from a studio perspective, that's great because you can make more stuff, right? Um, and filmmakers are also understanding and embracing that. It also means that you can iterate more in your ideas. If mm. you're a filmmaker and you want to like execute on a particular idea, and instead of like spending too much time and too much money on one singular shot, imagine having a world where you can try a bunch of those and then go with the one you like the most. And so from Hollywood, as you were telling before, like with the late show with Colbert, Translating hours of work into minutes of work, that's the value. They don't care about the AI and the, 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 the tag and the models and everything else. It's like, this is a, these are tools that are about time and cost. And so, mm. of course, you're going to embrace it because it's just so liberating. It's so creatively inspiring to be able to do this so fast. And so, Hollywood on the one hand, I think our conversations with folks in the space and our collaborations already driving in for, with, with companies and professionals are have been really like positive in, in, in the most um, literal sense. 
And then, of course, you have other spectrums of folks who never had the chance of having those tools at their disposal. And that, for us, is going back to our conversation around like new stories where we'll start mm. to see more and more over time. Those new stories that will start to emerge. What was this all trained on? What data set was this trained on? Because it understood, uh, you know, a New York loft. It understood mountains. I get that. But it also understood like a low angle shot. I'm assuming there's some amount of training that you're doing inside your company to take what are industry terms, a tracking shot, a wide shot, a close up. You're training it on that or and you're saying, hey, this is what those are. Here are examples of it. Or it's has it just scooped up every single movie ever <laughs> made? H how did you train this? It's uh, it's it's. It's there are a lot of different like systems and models behind the scenes of seeing something like this being possible. And so models are trained on different data sets depending on what you're trying to do and accomplish. And so we have our own internal data sets, but we also partner with media companies and industry experts to train models on their own data sets. So think about Got it. you're a filmmaker, you're working on a new animated film, you have all these reference shots about a character you want to animate. You can give us those data those images, the references, and we'll train a model just for you. So you basically mm. now have a system, an AI system that you can prompt with images, with text, whoever you want, and you can generate infinite amount of videos out of it. The more input data that you have, the better you will understand consistency, coherence of characters, uh, like temporal consistency of objects moving across the, the, the shot. And so it's really about, about customization, if you, if you think about mm. it. You start with a baseline model, and then from there on, you can just keep on improving to to have the model learn more more about it. So if you were to work with, say, The Simpsons, you could say, give us all 30 seasons of The Simpsons. And if, if I tried to use your product right now and said, make me Marge Simpson, uh, you know, as a as a Jedi Knight, um, <laughs> but who also has the superpower, has an Iron Man suit, would it be able to do that? Or because those are very highly protected IP sources, you can't train on that data, Therefore, we're going to see some, maybe the Simpsons make their own AI and you could have Simpsons GPT or Simpsons AI, where you take your software, their content library, and they say, hey, you can go to this website and you can make your own Simpsons and we're going to have our Simpsons film festival, just type into the box what you want to happen. And then yes. uh, we'll have our own contest, but it has to live on Simpsons AI TV. And here, the, you're exactly right. And the interesting thing is that I, I truly believe that creation and distribution will become more intertwined, right? So mm. think about video, think about a movie, you, you create the movie, you render the video, the, the movie or the video file is baked, right? It's pre-made, you're all everyone is watching the same film, right? That someone directed. The moment you have the systems running in real time, you're going to be able to visualize and render and view a video but that video is being generated the moment you're watching it, almost almost in real mm. time, right? And so the notion of like taking a big video and distributing it and streaming it in real time might change as well. Mm. Um, and that for me is like a key change in the market in terms of like understanding how distribution and creation will start to change radically, specifically again on, on the video side of things. Mm. Yeah, so this fan fiction stuff is going to get really interesting. There's um a website on youtube or sorry channel on youtube star wars theory and he was like a super fan and he made um this uh fan fiction called um vader and i'll just play a little clip for it here and it's obviously real actors but i think a lot of the backgrounds were created and he's he does fundraisings for i don't know 20 30 40 thousand dollars to do these uh and his fans give him the money and he goes and does it and star wars is pretty cool about if you're doing non-commercial um nice. they'll be okay with it but like you know it, it's pretty impressive and i think that this is going to be the future is you'll be able to go on disney plus and then there'll be disney plus fans and they'll let anybody create stuff and then maybe they'll only let certain ones onto the platform the best of but if you go on the web maybe you'll be able to see other stuff but this is really going to be a fascinating new world. Has anybody, I don't, I know you can't talk about private conversations and stuff like that, but is there somebody on the IP level of a Marvel, Star Wars, Simpsons, South Park, who is currently working on this right now? 
I think there are many companies paying attention to it for sure. They, they know, and it's same as you kind of like notice now and, and make sense of it. I think a lot of companies are making an understanding that that's an option they can take. And from a market perspective, it's just a great opportunity to get your custom, your, your IP and your characters and your stories out to more people and also engage them in different ways. Um, by the way, there's, I don't know if you've seen Star Wars Uncut. It's a similar project, but every shot is made by someone else, someone different. So oh, a yes. Star Wars movie that's like that's really nice. Yeah. Yeah, that was a crazy project. So they and they I think they're doing it also. Yeah, Star Wars Uncut was they just told everybody, do 10 seconds, but yes. do it in your own fun style. You could do claymation, yes. you do animation, you could do stop motion, you could do live action, you could make it whatever. Yes. Uh and uh yeah, those things have been out for yeah. a while. Yeah, uh, I like that that level of creativity. There's also the, the Yoni Cash project that was very similar. It's like just just one frame. Everyone, like all the fans, design one frame. Just design one frame and just stitch it all together. Only one frame? Oh, only I thought it was frame. like a couple of seconds. Um, uh, no, I think the Yoni frame, the Yoni Cash project is just one one frame. I may be wrong, but that was my. That's wild. Maybe that was the Raiders of the Lost Ark one. Then there were the kids. I don't know if you ever saw this. But there were a group of kids who started making a Raiders of the Lost Ark film. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, they just worked on it for like 10 years as they got older and older. So <laughs> this is Empire Strikes Back uncut. And uh, yeah, this is something that got the blessing. Um, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's Star Wars. Um, but here is the, the take the Empire Strikes Back one I just sent you. Because what's really creative about that one is you'll see everybody does a different style right. of uh, Empire Strikes Back and they get a couple of seconds each. And this thing is, and this is from 2012, this is 10 years old. Uh, but uh, this Empire Strikes Back one, which yeah. I put in the Slack, here we go. Uh, <laughs> here are puppets. <laughs> so somebody decided <laughs> they would do puppets. I mean, it's crazy. Uh, and if you put this with ChatGPT, the interesting thing, and has this come up yet inside of your, uh, you know, I mean, it's just crazy watching this, isn't it? It's like so creative. Uh, and this is 10 so here, years ago. Here, here's one that uh, I think like, if you think about a project like that with the technology that we have now, it's so interesting to see. I'm actually excited to see if someone want to take this further here. I'll share with you a, 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 a project. I saw that in TikTok two days ago. Um, so if you want to open that, that's driving video on the top, just someone recording himself and just like his house, just it's a piece of paper and like a bunch of other shots. Wow. And then you can you can translate that with runway into Holy any cow. style that you want. Um that's wild. So is this using your software or just some other AI? Yes. No, this is runway. Yes. This is runway. So basically he takes a shot and then tells runway, Hey, here's some text prompts. So make this in the style of a cartoon, make this in the style of an impressionistic painting, whatever. Wow. So it's giving the starting prompt and then going to the next thing. That's just demented. Um, that that so one I, I like a lot. It's just like a wall with like floor and it's just like you, you turn into a beach. Or like that yeah, one I like exactly. a lot as well. Like the paper paper boat is just like a real boat. But here's the interesting thing. It, it, you know, I don't know if you know about this auto GPT where people are making like agents that will operate in the background and make stuff. You could literally have somebody say, Take today's current events. Inter you know, take ChatGPT4. Um, read the top headlines. Translate them into a story that is similar to the Marvel characters and have Marvel characters intercede in these world events and make a movie about it. And so it's like, oh, Ukraine and Russia invaded Ukraine. And then there's this tension in Taiwan. And all of a sudden, Captain Marvel's going to Taiwan and you know, Tony Stark's going to <laughs> Ukraine. But what would happen is ChatGPT would be sent on a mission to take the top five criminal stories in the United States or, you know, dramatic events, match it with a character and make a short film, make the dialogue, and there would be no human involved. It would just publish this stuff to YouTube in real time. Yeah, I think that's technically possible. Everything you describe, you could just yeah. literally just, yeah, you can do it. <laughs> you're worried about any of this stuff i mean and there's a whole group of people who are worried i mean you're making fun images is there any downside here that you can 
that you do you have an, a group of people in your company worrying about safety? Or is it just like, well, this is entertainment purposes? Or do you worry about some, you know, buddy creating people saying something that would get them canceled and then publishing it on social media and that kind of stuff, impersonations, etc.? We take safety really seriously. We have an, a quality and alignment team inside Runway that makes sure the, the model outputs are safe and compliant with our terms of use. And of course, the field is evolving really rapidly and we've been pioneering all of things in the space. And so it's always been a kind of like starting point for us to think about mm. the best possible outcomes and the best possible approaches to use this technology in a safe, safe way. I do think about it in a, perhaps, you know, we're talking about the analogy of the camera. You can point the camera to all sort of like things you want to point the camera to, right? Um, it, it creates, um, it's a, it's an incredible tool. But it's also a tool that needs to be used in the right way, right? From our digital perspective as well, just having the camera won't make you a film director. You just need to understand mm -hmm. where to shoot, what to shoot. This is no difference. Like you have a tool that allows you to generate something, an idea. It's about iterating on that idea and understanding what works and what doesn't and what's safe and what's not. And all of those things are going to be things that we're going to figure out as an industry in the same way that mm -hmm. figure out systems and safety procedures for sharing videos and cameras, right? Um, I think we're still very early on all of it. And you might see this with language models being discussed more. Um, it's still very early for the industry at large. Uh, but yeah, we take it, we take it very seriously. About like nudity, adult content, and that kind of stuff. Obviously, there's a place for adult content in the world. I'm not talking about pornography necessarily, but there could be uh, a scene that is a, a risque scene from an R rated movie, or there could be a violent scene in a movie. How do you manage that in your terms of service? Quentin Tarantino <laughs> doing Inglorious Bastards and literally scalping Nazis. Would you allow that on your platform or not allowed on your platform? I think we're taking a more pause approach towards uh, helping people understand how to best use the technology. And so right now we don't allow nudity on the platform, for example. Mm. Uh, but we're working with filmmakers themselves to understand what that does mean and like what limits can we change. Uh, but again, I'll go back to this is still very early. Got it. I mean, if Darren Aronofsky came and said, listen, I'm making Requiem mm -hmm. for a Dream, it has some nudity in it, it has some violence, it has drug use in it, you could make an exception for him and then just make sure that they're not abusing somebody's likeness. I mean, yes, I think that is exactly. the really dark part of this is taking people who do even if you're a public figure and listen i'm a public figure people are making me into uh you know a superhero <laughs> as we speak on twitter or uh they were making right. star wars characters out of the all-in uh cast and it's like okay i'm cool with it but like let's not get too crazy folks um but you can see uh with these tools that people will get crazy at some point so i think it's probably like you've, you've probably got a pretty good concept here um, yeah. which is we don't allow stuff that would be risque right now or could hurt people, but we could have a conversation about it if you want to submit what you want to do, and we would have the right maybe to veto or approve it since you're using our tool to do it. That might be reasonable. I yeah, I think that's that's right. I think working with the communities that you're uh, trying to serve is really, really a key component here. Mm. So what's the hardest part of your job right now? As an AI company, well, I mean, it's AI is becoming this insane, you know, you, people have been working on this for decades. And then in the last six months, all of a sudden, it's like somebody lit the fuse and now the rocket is hurtling towards the edge of space. And so are you just inundated with too much inbound, too many people want to throw money at you, too much distraction or too much competition? too much change in the technology because it seems like this stuff is moving at a pace that is um, incomprehensible, even to people in yeah. the industry. No, yeah, things are moving fast. I, I, I would say, I guess, exactly what you mentioned, that there's been decades of work behind the scenes to get to this point. And for someone and for, for our team who've been working on this for a couple of years now, it's really important that that consistency and the level of like outputs of our research team and our product teams continues to be the same. There's of course more noise around, more people are paying attention to it, which is in some way great because you don't have to convince people that this is worth paying attention to. Everyone can just say it. I think we've, I keep saying that we've crossed the most important chasm that there is in technology, which is the mom 
threshold, which is my mom now uses Runway and understands what I do, uh, mm. which means that the technology has gotten mainstream enough where it's more accessible or more understandable for more people. That mm. still means that we haven't got into its final form. There's so many things we need to, uh, it's so early. I think that for me is one of the key challenges is really emphasizing where we are with the technology at large, what needs to be improved, and also exposing more people to how things work. There's a lot of misconceptions around how image generation works and how video generation works and how language models works. And really understanding the ins and outs will help drive a better conversation around the space in a more impactful, positive way. Um, and I think that's a key challenge for me and because things will continue to accelerate uh, really, really quickly because the technology itself has proven to be extremely, extremely useful. Well, and congratulations also on your work. I, I understand uh, the team for everything, everywhere, all at once uh, use the product a bit. Yes, they use our roto tool, our rotoscoping tool to edit some shots in the in the movie. And I think that's the power of really like filmmaking. They, they won seven Academy Awards, including best editing. The fascinating thing about that movie is it was it was the visual effects team. I, you watch it. I'm assuming you're watching it. You yeah. watch the movie, right? The visual effects team behind that movie, which is remember a very intense visual effects movie was made by seven people, right? So seven people. Wow. Yeah. Seven people made the entire visual effects shots there. Um, and I think that's a representation of where you start to see more of, which is like very highly creative, incredibly talented folks using tools, uh, that weren't accessible before creating movies that can win seven, seven Academy Awards. Um, so that's, that's, uh, that's a great, I guess, uh, sneak peek into probably what we'll start to see more and more into in the filmmaking process. Amazing to see what happened in Star Wars and Blade Runner, people using miniatures, people having cameras <laughs> in all kinds of weird positions, blowing up little models to, to now this. Uh, absolutely incredible. Company is Runway. You can visit them, runwayml.com. Chris, thank you so much uh, and continued success. And uh, let's keep trading some... Uh, some movie recommendations. Good, some good recommendations First. we got today. Yeah, all good right, brother. Thank we'll you for having you me here. Yeah, and we'll see everybody next time on this week in startups.